This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. I'm Roby Brock. Welcome to the program. We appreciate you joining us this morning. It was 58 years ago this week that nine courageous African-American teens entered Central High School for the first time despite a throng of white protesters and a governor resisting integration. September 23rd, 1957, an angry mob of over 1,000 whites gathered in front of Central High School while the Little Rock Nine were escorted inside. The Little Rock police removed the nine children for their safety that very day. The next day, September 24th, 1,200 members of the 101st Airborne Division, the Screaming Eagles of Fort Campbell, Kentucky, rolled into Little Rock. The Arkansas National Guard was placed under federal orders. And on September 25th, 1957, under troop escort, the Little Rock Nine were escorted back into Central High School for their first full day of classes. Joining me for a conversation on race relations in the context of all of this of the last 58 years is State Senator Joyce Elliott of Little Rock. Thank you for being here. Oh, I'm glad to be here, Roby. You were in first grade during the Central High crisis, but you were seeing images of this on TV and reading about this in the paper. What do you remember? What was going through your mind? I, I remember being excited because I was finally going into first grade. And uh, of course, I, I didn't know, I was too young to really know much about um, the crisis. And I didn't actually see the pictures on TV. I actually saw them in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, I heard everybody talking about them, all the adults. And even then, I, I guess it's fair to say I was precociously nosy. So I was always <laughs> trying to find out what are they talking about. And then somebody, just to shut me up, just said they've got soldiers at the school that, you know, in Little Rock didn't even say Central High. And the biggest memory from that is just wondering, where are my soldiers? Because yeah. in the mind of a, of a first grader, I thought everybody gets soldiers on the first day of school. So here we are almost 60 years later. It's, yes. We've had two steps forward, two steps backwards. I mean, there's been progress made, but we let me run through a litany of a few things here. Okay. This Just this year, the South Carolina flag with Confederate symbolism on it's been removed, yet a flag goes back up in Batesville, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. uh, Little Rock looks like it's going to change the name of Confederate Boulevard, but the state legislature can't agree on separating the Martin Luther King and the mm -hmm. Robert E. Lee holidays. Right. Uh, we see Black Lives Matter, the movement, uh, BLM, yet we see political candidates complain about having to be politically correct. Right. Why do we keep hitting the reset button? I, you know, that's something that's confounding to me because I, I just know, even as a kid, I, you know, I was a part of the integration thing. I went to all black schools and progress was happening when we went to, uh, oh, we're going to integrate the schools. I was a part of that later on when I was like 16, 15 years old. And that was integration, and we did great through the 70s and into part of the 80s, and now here we are, schools are resegregated. And I think we just don't have the will to do something about what we know is a scourge on this nation. And all of us would like to be comfortable, and we retreat to comfort rather than, I think, confront our history and confront our presence. So when you don't confront it, what you do is, is you just uh, retreat to what feels normal and what feels good. Right. There is no way to get past it, I think, until we have the resolve to do so something about it. You and I have talked about this before recently, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact, about how South Africa, with its history of apartheid yes. and t tremendous racial tensions, has been able to make some significant yes. progress mm -hmm. in race relations. Is that an example of how the conversation should move forward in America? I think it is an example, and I think most people don't realize that even there are some other countries that have gone through the reconciliation process in, in, in Africa. Uh, but South Africa is the big one because that's the one that was on all of our radar. And what they did was not just hoped things would be better, although they still have a ways to go, but they actively and physically uh, I guess, as we would say in vernacular, manned up to it and womaned up to it and said, we've got to figure out a way to deal with what's happened to us and reconcile. Because, you know, hating and separation, all those things are easy to do. But they were deliberate about it. Because we need to remember, we had to go through deliberate acts to be segregated we are also going to have to go through deliberate acts to be integrated. And that's what South Africa chose to do. Great stuff. All right. Thank you for joining me for this sure. conversation, looking back at our past and pointing to the future. State Senator Joyce Elliott, so much. Thanks Absolutely. For being here. All right. After the break, uh, we're going to look at headlines. And Wes Brown and Jessica Deloach Sabin bring their big stories of the week to the table. And later, there is a lot of traffic to navigate on how to fund highways in Arkansas. Our political roundtable with Craig Douglas, Shannon Newton, and Chris Valines. We'll see if we can avoid any detours. We're back after this.